what's going on guys, IO Studios here from the Cinema 4D tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to use the physical renderer uh, to render your scenes in higher quality or whatever you're using it for, depth of field, motion blur, um, but physical is better than um, standard. So anyway, um, we're going to get started and we're going to open up our render settings and I'm actually just going to make a new render settings, let's see here, new, and uh, we'll open up that one and we'll just call this render settings tutorial call it whatever you like I don't care or don't call it anything at all so uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna head to our renderer and we're gonna set that to physical and in our physical here um, we're gonna get started okay so basic properties um, the first thing depth of field that's just depth of field it's pretty self-explanatory I did a tutorial on depth of field if you want to you guys can go check that out um, but yeah so that's that uh, motion blur is motion blur um, when objects move they get blurred um, motion blur subdivisions is essentially a quality slider. The deformation subdivisions as if you want to deform your motion blur, um, which I don't know why you would want to do that. Um, I never use that. And the hair subdivisions, um, that's just, I think you can turn down the subdivisions for hair because otherwise hair would take like forever to render. Um, yeah, okay, anyway, the sampler is um, adaptive, is um, the best one to use in my opinion, but use progressive, which is progressive. It progressively refines the image. Um, and the fixed one, um, that just, that's very static render, not static, but like, that's not a really good one to use, it's, um, it's just a fixed render, it's pretty static, but anyway, um, adaptive is just the best, it's, it has the most options, and it's just higher quality, it's, it's just the best one, I'm gonna be honest, it's just the best one. Okay, sampling quality, I mean, you got some presets here, but I'm not gonna look at the presets at all, because they're pretty self-explanatory, and that would make it for a very boring tutorial, and you wouldn't learn much if I just showed you presets. So, we're gonna make our own thing here. So, we're gonna look, uh, sampling subdivisions, sampling, or sampling subdivisions, that's just, um, how much subdivides the sample, so, you know, it's essentially a quality slider, I mean, higher values are gonna result in better quality, as well as the shading subdivisions. The sampling, shading... Um, uh, sampling subdivisions and the shading subdivisions are the biggest influences on, influencers on quality, I think. Um, well, they are. Uh, sampling subdivisions, um, yeah, you can turn that up. That's like, six is okay. Um, seven, much higher quality, but obviously longer render times. As you increase all these values, you will get longer render times. So, the shading subdivisions minimum, um, that's the minimum amount of subdivisions it allows for the shading. And the shading is just when it goes naturally, like, obviously shades the scene, right? Uh, converts it all from like a wireframe or whatever it is to a natural nice image. Um, so, uh, shading subdivisions minimum. Um, four is pretty good, maybe five, but four I think we'll leave it at that or render times will be insane. Shading subdivisions max, this is the higher you put this, you're going to get much longer render times. So, you know, seven's pretty good. Eight, that's maybe a bit insane, but um, I think you can just turn that down to six and you'll probably be okay. Um, Anyway, uh, shading error threshold. This is essentially when it's going around and shading everything. It doesn't do it all perfectly. So, um, it, this is just kind of a little thing that says the minimum amount of error, or the, the, the maximum amount of shading error it's allowed to do per subdivision, I think, or for the whole image. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but basically, obviously, as you add higher values, like 5%, um, your render times will decrease, but you'll see more artifacts. And if you bring it down to like 0.5, you'll get much longer render times, but um, much reduced artifacts. Um, shading transparency check, yeah, you can enable that. Um, doesn't make a huge difference. It's just for transparent objects. <clears throat> anyway, um, and the blurring the subdivisions. Now we're gonna look at these because the actual sampling quality, the presets here don't actually affect these. So, okay, blurring the subdivisions. This is for the depth of field. Um, and I think anti-aliasing, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's a, it's a quality slider for depth of field and aliasing, I think. Anti-aliasing, I think. Um, so as you turn this up to, like, 4, um, the blur, the quality of the blur, depth of field, um, and the anti-aliasing, I think, will improve. But, um, yeah, uh, that's that. Uh, 6 is, like, 5 is probably okay. Uh, maybe 6 if you're doing your, like, final, final render. But obviously, these will take, like, a long time to render with all these settings. Um, anyway, shadow subdivisions, you can really turn that up. Eight. Shadows don't take a lot of um, <clears throat> computational power anyway, so turning up the quality of those doesn't really matter. Um, and ambient occlusion, um, that's the ambient occlusion, you know, maybe turn that up to five, four, or no, maybe turn that up to like five or six, something like that. Um, that's just the ambient occlusion. And um, sur subsurface scattering is subsurface scattering. It's the quality of your subsurface scattering. 
And I'm going to turn that down since I have no subsurface scattering in my scene. I'm going to turn that down just to save. I mean, it will, really won't render anything anyway, but I'm just going to turn that to zero because I don't have any subsurface scattering in my scene. Okay, now we're going to look. Uh, we're going to go look at the advanced tab. <clears throat> okay, so the ray tracing engine, the physical one is the physical one. It's probably the highest quality, but uh, takes the longest time to render. And Embry is Embry faster, still really good quality. I mean, <clears throat> I, I you'd be hard pressed to find a difference between the two, really. Um, but the um, the Embry faster one is the best one. Then there's Embry smaller, which uses less RAM, less memory, but obviously takes longer to render. It's just better at memory management. But um, Embry faster is the best one. Uh, okay, uh, the best one to use in my opinion. Uh, anyway, quick preview. Um, this is just it does a quick preview before um, it does the final render. I mean that that's really only for progressive renders, I think. But or that's for for progressive mode. It does the preview when um, in progressive mode or you can set it to never do a preview or when it's in all modes or preview only um, uh, if you preview only it won't do any kind of final render it will literally just preview and I'll show that right now it will yeah you can see here it's uh okay so to be fair I don't have any GI so let's, let's add some GI but the um all this basically does is just <clears throat> you know this is if you only want to preview render really fast low quality preview render um, this is says it's never do preview in this progressive mode and all modes. Anyway, I'm that's I'm getting stuck on that one. <clears throat> okay, so uh, quick preview side. Uh, <coughs> sorry, um, debug information level. Um, none is just none. Uh, regular gives you a bit information about your render, about the physical render. Um, I think about samples and stuff like that. And the detailed one is extremely detailed um, debug level info. So just m lots of more information about your render, but you really don't need that unless you really need it, I don't know, but I'm just going to set it to none because I don't really use that. Okay, uh, we're going to add some GI, and uh, in my opinion, the best GI settings are QMC, QMC. Um, it's just the highest quality. QMC is like, uh, it doesn't pre-calculate the GI. It does the GI while it's rendering, but it's highest quality, and it takes the longest time to render, so, you know, be warned. Um, the samples, you know, you can do custom sample counts, uh, this arrow here, and you know, set the samples to whatever you want, but um, that's the highest quality. If you want some decent quality, just try and tear your preview, and we'll um, we'll do a preview here. <clears throat> uh, so actually, that GI is or that GI is probably going to take quite a while to compute, but uh, we'll do a little test render here, and this is going to look probably pretty bad, but at least we can see um, we can see a little preview. You can see here, so, so you know, it'll, the, that's what the preview does. The preview does a little bit of a kind of crappy quality preview render, though. But, you, like, you see what's you see what the final render is going to roughly look like. Um, so you get a better idea. And then it will, um, so you can see here it's doing the quick preview past 5 out of 5. Uh, and then it will, obviously, it'll do the actual physical render and improve the quality. But it, it's nice. It gives you a little bit of, now it's actually starting the final render. But it's nice because it gives you a little bit of a preview of what your scene will actually look like in the end. So, anyway, that's pretty much everything. Um, yeah, that's pretty much everything. The options here are the same as any other options. But, anyway, that's pretty much that. Uh, I'm going to leave the final rendered result at the end of the video. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, subscribe to my channel, like this video to support me. Uh, leave a comment if you have any requests for tutorials, and I will attempt to fulfill them. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching, everyone, and see you all later. Bye!